Two sentences were needed for viewers to finally see the subtle transformation of one quite important character in The Handmaid's Tale. Another character was involved in a near-death experience but survived, and well, a simple breakfast scene was enough for fans to feel satisfied and happy. With no further ado, here are the best moments in The Handmaid's Tale Season 5. We'll start off with Anne Lydia's transformation. The Lord's light shines through the most righteous. Blessing. The moment Anne Lydia turns slightly against Gilead has been featured in the third episode of the fifth installment. If this moment leads to Gilead's destruction, well, we might see Aunt Lydia destroying Gilead once and for all. Although this is likely to happen in the sequel to The Handmaid's Tale, The Testaments, which is already in development thanks to Hulu. Even if Aunt Lydia doesn't turn against Gilead in the series, it was nice to see her having a bit of soul for a change. I mean, after everything she's done, even a small change in her character seems great. One thing I really don't like about Season 5 is Janine's constant struggle. In Season 5, Episode 3, Border, Janine is once again lying in a hospital bed after she was poisoned by Esther. Now, when Aunt Lydia visits Janine, we're seeing a different person. When you compare Aunt Lydia in Season 1 to the one we're seeing in Season 5, well, the two are quite different. Lydia has tried and tried to keep the girls disciplined and safe, but despite her efforts, these girls have gone through hell. When she visits Janine, drops to her knees at her bedside, and begs God for forgiveness. The thing is, she isn't asking God to forgive Janine's sins, she's asking him to forgive her own sins. She says, she doesn't deserve this, please don't punish her to teach me a lesson. The next thing she says is definitely a thing to remember before you watch the upcoming episodes. I'll turn things around. I'll do things differently. In Margaret Atwood's 2019 sequel novel to The Handmaid's Tale, titled The Testaments, a sequel that will premiere on Hulu in about two years from now, it's revealed that Aunt Lydia has been working against Gilead all of this time. Such a twist won't happen in the series, but we strongly believe that Aunt Lydia will be hugely involved in the destruction of Gilead. She might start working against it sometime in the fifth season, since one of the characters that will lead the Testaments is Aunt Lydia herself, we might see more background on her work against Gilead. What do you guys think of Lydia's transformation? What are your hopes when it comes to the downfall of Gilead? Let us know before we get into more details regarding the iconic breakfast scene. Please do not punish her. Please do not punish her to teach me a lesson. I Elizabeth Moss came back to her prize her role as our beloved protagonist, but she had a really difficult job for season 5 as she also served as an executive producer and director on the Hulu series. The premiere of the fifth installment proved to be very intense, packed with a lot of important scenes. Interestingly enough, Moss's favorite sequence is in season 5, and the fact that she directed the sequence makes the whole thing even better. The fifth installment opens up with the aftermath of Fred Waterford's death. Shortly after the big event, June, who's still covered in blood, leaves her house to meet up with the ex-handmaids who helped her with this plan. All of them meet at a diner, and they eat breakfast food while Dolly Parton's Get Unhappy plays in the background. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Moss directed the sequence, and as previously mentioned, this is one of her favorite scenes in the entire show. The actress also talked about June's uncertain future. The guilt that she feels is very palpable, and she wants to be punished. She wants someone to tell her what's right and what's wrong. Coming out of Gilead, she has a very skewed idea of what's right and what's wrong, and of violence and when it's right and when it's wrong, having not only been the victim of violence, but witnessing it so many times. Moss explained, adding that she really wants somebody to say, what you did was wrong and you need to be punished for it. And she doesn't get it. She doesn't get that release. She doesn't get that satisfaction. So she doesn't know where to put it. She also mentioned something about you smashing that like button if you haven't done it already. Now our next moment is the one in which June and Duke head into no man's land. As expected, June and Serena start a war in the fifth season. Serena hates losing, and she'll do everything to revenge June for what June did to her beloved husband. In this season, June and her husband Luke decide to go into no man's land. Without knowing the outcome, this seemed like a good idea. When Luke says he's going in to find the Guardian, June seems to be so proud of him, so she agrees to go together with him. Once they find the Guardian, he leads them to a shelter and gives them a bit of info about the wife's schools. The couple then stumbles upon some pretty messed up discoveries that involve their daughter Hannah. The moment Luke and June reunite is what made this moment so special. The fact that neither Moira nor Luke has abandoned June 
is what makes Season 5 so special. Another special moment was the one during which we discovered that Jinnin survives. Go get our stuff. We should get back. She's going to be okay. Okay, thanks. Can someone give this character a break already? I mean, it's about time for Janine to go at least an episode without something awful happening to her. So Esther, a character played by McKenna Grace, gets assigned to the Putnam household, where Warren, played by Stephen Kunkin, decides to assault her. No, no, this doesn't happen during the ceremony. This awful man tries to feed her some chocolate while his wife is elsewhere. The scene he's feeding her chocolate is, without a doubt, one of the most disturbing scenes in the show. But what happens to Esther leads to her trying to kill herself and Janine, played by Madeline Brewer. The moment we found out that Janine is alive will forever be on the list of best moments in the series. She woke up a few hours ago. She's made some improvements. Another such moment is definitely the one with Fred Waterford's funeral. I know we all expected to see a major funeral for the person responsible for June's sufferings through all of the previous seasons, but the creators went on a whole other level creating a sequence that will forever live in our minds. The moment June sent Serena Fred's finger, we knew Serena will do everything to pay June back. But first, she needed to arrange the biggest funeral she could for her dear husband. She travels to Gilead and is not fascinated with what's planned for her deceased husband. I think we need to make Fred's funeral an international event broadcast across the globe, she says. Fred's funeral in Gilead is not about Fred at all. The funeral is all about Serena, sent executive producer Bruce Miller in a featurette. She choreographs it so that it makes her look powerful. There's also a group of young girls present at the event all dressed up in purple. One of them gives Serena a bouquet of flowers. Serena then kisses her forehead, the funeral's all over, television screens in Canada with Luke and June watching. It doesn't take them long until they realize this girl is their daughter Hannah. According to Hulu, you need to smash that subscribe button and notification bell so you'll never miss any of our videos in the future. Fred's funeral is the beginning of the much-anticipated war between Serena and June, and although most fans are waiting for Serena to become a handmaid, with her child eventually being taken away from her, we have a feeling that Serena will, after all, win this round. See you in the next video.